uh, today is December 24th, Merry Christmas Eve, and I'm currently with family, I'm at my dad's house, and it's been really nice to just chill. I haven't read as much as I'd like to, but that's fine. I'm currently a third of the way through Ship of Magic, and I really like it so far. My heart is full, um, I'm in it, but it's definitely a lot more fast paced than the books in the Farseer trilogy. And I really like the way it kind of seamlessly transitions to different characters' points of views. I'm really interested in Kennet, who's the pirate character in this book. Uh, he has a whole I want to be the pirate king thing going on. He seems to have, you know, like an angsty past. He got some issues. There's like a pirate underworld. I'm totally into that. So like part of the story is following Kenneth this pirate and then part of the story is following Althea who's part of this trader family who used to be wealthy but has recently fallen on hard times. Her family owns this ship called the Vivacia and when this book started out when we first introduced Althea I thought this was going to be like a horse girl movie except it's like Althea and the, the ship instead of Althea and a horse but there's a pretty big twist like early on that makes me feel like that is not going to be the case but a lot has happened even in just like the first third of this book each character has their own angst and like backstory stuff and like issues they're dealing with it's very captivating I like, I like it a lot I will say my only complaint so far that was also a complaint I had in the Farseer trilogy is that both the villain in the Farseer trilogy and the villain in this book they just seem to be like comically evil to the point where it's just like a little bit unrealistic and like very frustrating. So the guy in this book who seems to be the antagonist, he's just like so annoying and like unrealistically evil. But yeah, that's my only complaint. Other than that, like I'm really enjoying this book and I'm excited to read more and I'm excited to read the other two books in this series too. Today is Monday, January 3rd. It's been a while since I've recorded. I went home and visited family for my two week break from work and now I'm back at my apartment and slowly getting my life together and getting back into the swing of things. I definitely did not read nearly as much as I thought I would over the break. Like I brought like five books home, but all I really read was Ship of Magic. I'm a little over halfway through and I'm having a very good time. Honestly, I think this might be a five star read. I think in like this middle section, it slowed down for me a little bit. Basically like in the first part of this book, um, we're like kind of introduced to like this big cast of characters and we see that each of them has their own goals and like things they want to achieve in life. And I think like the buildup of this book is a lot of fun. And now that we're in the middle, it's kind of like the cards have been dealt, the characters are in the situations that they're in and they're trying to like kind of like work their way through. I really like a lot of the characters in this book. As I mentioned before, we kind of bounce around from the points of view of different characters. One of my favorite characters so far is probably Wintro. He's a sweet, sweet boy. So Wintro is the son of Kyle, who's like the ship captain and he's kind of the antagonist in this book. Um, and Wintro basically is put into a situation that he really doesn't want to be in and there's nothing he can do about it. And basically we see him kind of struggle to like make the most of this new life he's in, but he also really resists and wants to go back to like the safe comfort of his old life and the comfort of his old goals that he's now had to give up. And I don't know, there is, it's just a lot of fun to lose yourself in a character like that, especially when you have things in your own life that are out of control, it's nice to just see you know, a fictional character cope with that. And yeah, he's just a good, good boy. I like Wintro a lot. I also feel this way about Althea. Althea is one of, I would say she's like one of the main characters. This book is definitely an ensemble cast, but Althea like feels like the main character. She definitely has like those hero traits. Um, she's also put into a circumstance that is out of her control that she's very unhappy with. But unlike Wintro, who's kind of just like sitting there and taking it, Althea is 
like trying to take all the steps that she can to reverse this path that she's been put on and try to like achieve her original goals. The way she's doing this does kind of feel like a fool's errand, but she's very like steadfast and strong and I'm excited to see where her story goes. I also like Brashen, he's another sailor character and basically he keeps crossing paths with Althea. He's now I think either like the first or second mate of the ship that Althea is working on. And he's like just hard not to like. He has that classic like tough exterior, like muddy past, he makes bad decisions, but at, at the end he's a good person at heart. I am excited to see where Brashen and Althea's relationship goes. I normally don't really like romantic subplots in fantasy books and so I don't think I want there to be a rom romantic subplot, but I like the ways that Althea and Brashen's paths keep crossing and are kind of like intertwined with each other and I hope to see their friendship grow. There's like lots of other characters in this book that I could talk about, but I'm gonna keep reading. Uh, so far, really enjoying it. here. So I just wanted to give a quick warning that my discussion of Ship of Magic does get a little bit spoilery if you don't know. I'll also have it marked down in the time codes down below, but just a warning, if you don't want spoilers, please stop watching this video. Um, I also just wanted to say that honestly this is something I've been struggling with a lot, wondering whether I should stay away from spoilers or whether I should just give my full unfiltered opinion. And Honestly, I'm kind of erring towards the latter just because I think that's the most fun experience for me. Kind of the point of me recording these videos and the fun of it is kind of like just being open and honest about my opinions of these books and talking to the camera as though I would be talking to a friend. And when I'm trying hard to stay away from spoilers, it kind of does feel like I'm like walking through a maze or walking on eggshells. It does feel like I can't be as open and honest about these discussions as I would like to be. So yeah, moving forward, I might just have more spoiler tags in my videos. Um, and I do hope to kind of switch my format to both reading vlogs that have spoilers and maybe like every other month a reading wrap up that kind of reviews all the books I've read without spoilers. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching and here's the rest of the video. Hello, today is Saturday, January 8th. I'm still reading Ship of Magic. I'm like three quarters through. I am really enjoying this book. Okay, so I think like Wintrow is my favorite character right now. There was this like really powerful moment with him. Basically you see him go from kind of like this like wimpy little boy to like someone who stands up for himself. And it was just like so satisfying to see that turn and just so satisfying to see him persevere and like do the do his best even though he's in like a really shitty situation. Okay, so this like romantic subplot between Althea and Brashen, I saw it coming. I think they set up pretty early on in the book that Althea's father or like family or someone wants her to get with Brashen, but she's like, ew, he's gross, he's nasty, he's mean, but they keep crossing paths. 
And like, and usually when there's like a romantic subplot in a fantasy book, I like don't really need it. I'm not really here for it. And I do think that this moment with Althea and Brashen is like kind of cringe. Like I'm like, what are you guys doing? This is messy. You guys are silly. But also there's like a really nice heart comfort moment. And I think I ship it. I think I'm here for it. But I'll update on how I feel about that. But um, today's Saturday. It's the weekend. So I'm hoping I can finish Ship of Magic this weekend. Um, and yeah, I'll be back with my thoughts. Today is January 16th and I'm almost done with Ship of Magic. Once again, it is taking me forever to get through these Robin Hobb books, even though I feel like Ship of Magic, of all the ones I've read, is the most fast paced so far. Where do I begin? It's been, a, it's been a bit since I've recorded last and I feel like there's like so much to catch up on with this book. But I'll start off by once again talking about Wintro, who I love dearly. Um, Wintro's arc and character and story like just keeps getting like stronger and stronger for me. So basically Wintro throughout the book doesn't have a lot of agency. He's forced onto the Vivacia by his father Kyle who's kind of this evil man and he just has to take what's given to him. He was sworn as a priest of Sav and all he wants to do is go back and be a priest. He doesn't want to be a sailor, but he's forced onto this journey by his father. And and basically, Wintro comes to a realize, realization that he's just stuck and he won't be able to achieve his goals of going back to his like priest brotherhood unless he like does something about his current situation. He realizes he's just kind of like let fate decide where he goes, but things won't change unless he forces them to change. And so he sneaks off the Vivacia and is then captured by city guards and um, forced into a slave pen and he is set to be sold as a slave the next day. And while he's jailed and about to become a slave, he sees Torg, who's the first mate um, on the Vivacia, like walking by and he's like deciding whether to call out to Torg or just stay silent. And Winter realizes he has like two decisions either to stay in the jail and be sold as a slave the next day, but with the chance that he could run away from his slave master and return to his brotherhood. Or he calls out to Torg, who will probably bring him back to the Vivacia, but then he's a slave in his own way, where he's just like a slave to his father's will. And he struggles with this like indecision, but then Torg notices him and I think he describes, oh, like his heart like leapt for joy because he was just so relieved that the decision was about to be made for him. And in the end, he is forced back onto the ship and is, just seems very dejected. And he realizes this is kind of just like his lot in life and maybe where he was meant to be and just that he has to make the most of it. And I don't know, this whole journey that Wintro goes through, especially this bit of like having to take matters into your own hand, but also just like wanting someone else to make the decisions for you and the relief that comes with like someone else making the decisions for you when you're faced with two kind of bad choices. like. I just really related to that um, and I can see myself in Wintro and other thoughts in this book. I'm really interested to see where Kenneth's arc goes. I I'm almost at the end and I can tell that like these different storylines we're following are kind of converging to a point and I think I know where Kenneth's point converges with the characters on the Vivacia but 
I'm waiting to see what happens and I'm very curious to see how that unfolds. A random thought, but my like headcanon vision of Kenneth is Silco from the TV show Arcane and like I can't get that out of my head. And while we also follow like the, the ship drama, we also follow like the home drama of the Vestrit family. We follow Ronica, who's Althea's mother, and Kefria, who's Althea's sister, as well as Kefria's daughter, Malta. And Malta's just like, Malta's another character who's annoyingly evil and like, she's so ill-intentioned in such a frustrating way. Every time I read a chapter with Malta's POV, I'm just like, Ugh, please stop. But I'm also curious to see where things go with them. Yeah, it's like each of these characters' storylines are kind of reaching like a turning point again where everyone, like each storyline I feel like started with like a turning point and then most of the book follows the characters like dealing with this like big thing that has changed in their lives and now i feel like as we're towards the end of the book each character is at a point where their lives will change again and they just have to like take matters into their own hands and make the most of things and see where things go. Vivacia, the ship herself, is also an interesting character. We see in the latter half of this book, Vivacia becomes kind of eerie and scary. Like at one point she tells one of the mates on the ship, like, oh, I have a bad feeling of this about this journey. Like I'd get onto a different ship if I were you. And that just like gave me chills. Like Vivacia is like a sentient masthead on the ship and her body is also the ship itself. So she's able to do things like rock the ship from side to side, like lower an anchor like of her own volition. And there's like a lot of superstition regarding live ships. And the reason why Winter is on the ship is because live ships need to have one of their uh, family members, one of their like blood relations on the ship or else the journey just won't go well. Even though Wintro and Vivacia are now reunited after um, Wintro has been saved from the slave block, even though they're now reunited, there's like this awkwardness and this like pain between them because Vivacia can tell that like Wintro just like doesn't want to be here and he's bitter. I don't know if Wintro and Vivacia's relationship is my favorite thing in this book because I feel like it's almost painted as kind of romantic, which I'm not here for. I think I would be more into it if it felt more like a familial relationship, but currently they're definitely like at odds and I'm curious to see how they both can heal from that. And yeah, I overall just really enjoying this book, excited to see where it goes. Okay, bye. Hi, it's the next day and I finished Ship of Magic last night. This did end up being a five-star read for me. I had so much fun with this book. So in the last like 50 or 100 pages or so of this book, like shit really goes down on the Vivacia and you see some of the uh, storylines that were following, some of the storylines converge. And that was really satisfying to see all this build up and all these uh, pieces fall into just the right place for these storylines to converge. I feel like this book had a really good pace and energy all the way through, but the last 50 pages or so were very climactic. There's this like very uh, intense and like satisfying confrontation between Wintro and his father Kyle. There's a satisfying conclusion for Kenneth. We see him achieve a goal that he's been chasing throughout the book, but he's just like in bad shape. And I'm really curious to see what place Kenneth takes in the plot of this story as it continues forward. There are two more books. Althea has been struggling to get what she wants all throughout this book. And she finally gets this big one at the end. And it made me emotional. It was so satisfying. And I was like so happy for her. I wanted to tear up. The next book in this series is called The Mad Ship, which I just bought um, and I'll be picking that up shortly probably. And then after I finished Ship of Magic last night, I picked up this comic that I bought a while ago called Salt Magic by Hope Larson and Rebecca Mock. I believe Hope Larson is the writer and Rebecca Mock is the uh, illustrator for this comic. Um, and basically I followed the artist on Twitter and saw that they had a, a new graphic novel published, but I did not know what this book was about. So I was so pleasantly surprised. Salt Magic follows um, a young girl living in the town of Gypsum, Oklahoma in like 1919. Uh, she lives on a farm and basically this witch comes to town and curses her family's farm and she goes on this journey to like lift the curse. And basically it's a fantasy western which is like so up my alley. It has like that moodiness of a western 
but also there's like a lot of like house moving castle vibes it's very like fantastical first of all i really like the story i the the ending made me emotional i really like the whole journey and more than that the art is just like beautiful it has like this beautiful like painterly style um the artist has like so much beautiful like movement in her work and i love the way that she draws shadows. I feel like it's hard to find a graphic novel where I really enjoy both the art and the story. I feel like usually it's like one or the other. Um, and so I, I also gave this five stars. It kind of like blew me away. I'm definitely biased because this, the story and the mood and the fantastical elements of it were definitely something that's very up my alley in the type of stories I like to tell. But yeah, definitely. It, it's also a super fast read. Check it out for sure.